the beginning of The Dark Knight, you see that, that Bruce Wayne uh, and his Batman persona have matured. He's, he's really the fully formed Batman uh, from the comics. But he's also in a place where he's having to question, having to gauge the, the response uh, to his presence in Gotham that he's seeing. He's seeing a rise in copycats and vigilantism and all kinds of things going on and uh, an escalation of, of the war with organized crime. And so there are a lot of... Um, potentially negative consequences of, of his crusade brewing uh, in Gotham at the beginning of the film. It seemed most logical to us that if he saw himself as a symbol to inspire people, if he saw what he was doing as a, a contained thing, a short-term crusade, if you like, to inspire the good of Gotham to take the city back, that made sense to us. And so at the beginning of The Dark Knight, you're looking at a character who has embarked on this, this crusade, is looking for an end to it, and sees in the person of Harvey Dent, the new district attorney in Gotham, he, he sees the response he was looking for. He sees the legitimate face of his campaign being taken over by Harvey Dent. Uh, and I think that pleases him for a couple of reasons. I mean, it pleases him uh, in our story because this was his original aim, to see the good of, of Gotham rise again. But it also pleases him, I think, because he sees that he might be able to stop being Batman. He might be able to go back to having it. Uh, a relatively normal uh, existence. I had an idea of what the Joker would be in the world we'd created a, of Batman Begins. And to me, it was creating a sort of psychologically credible anarchist, um, a force of anarchy, a force of chaos, a, a purposeless criminal, uh, a psychopath. Um, to me, that was the most, that is the most frightening form of evil. The, the enemy who has no rules, the enemy who's not out for anything, who can't be understood, can only be, can only be fought. And uh, while uh, Jonah was working on the first draft, I, I met with Heath, and um, he really seemed to relate to what I was talking about. He seemed to understand how this character could be extraordinarily frightening and fresh and, and different than, than anything that had been done before. Aaron uh, is somebody whose work I'd admired for, for some years. I'd actually spoken to him about doing Memento years back, but it hadn't worked out. Uh, and when we were casting Harvey Dent, we were looking for somebody who could embody that all-American charm, that, that very heroic presence, almost the kind of Robert Redford sort of aura, uh, but would also have this edge, would also have this undercurrent of anger and uh, darkness to him that, that Harvey Dent needs, so that where he goes in the story isn't a cheat. Uh, you have to really believe that this guy has um, lengths he'd go to that are, that are questionable, uh, but you have to invest in him as a very attractive, heroic figure at the beginning of the movie, and Aaron embodies all these qualities very, very well. I'm very pleased with the, the results of our IMAX photography. It's uh, the world's highest resolution uh, film format, and it creates an extraordinarily immersive image on the IMAX screen, which is a, a colossal, you know, eight-story screen, it throws the audience right into the action in a way that no other film format could. And so for our special IMAX presentations of, of the film, I think there's going to be a very unique experience for people to be had there. And for me, it's an experience that takes me back to when I was a kid going to the movies and, and the scope and scale um, and grandeur that, that great cinema could have. Uh, as a filmmaker, I think you're always trying to get back to that. And for me in expanding the scope of, of the story we told in Batman Begins, and expanding the canvas, and having the greatest possible canvas for the Batman to face off against the Joker. Uh, IMAX seemed the, the best way to do that. We decided in this film that it was going to be necessary to show more of the way in which Batman fights. The Casey system that, that we applied to his, his method of fighting in the first film um, was somewhat obscured by the way in which we chose to present the character, which was from the criminal's point of view. So in the first film, you're always catching glimpses of Batman. And so whilst Christian and everybody, you know, the, the fights were arranged according to the KC method, um, it's really not until this film where you really get to see the way he moves and so forth that that starts to, to pay off as a very unique fighting style and one that's based on improvisation and an awareness of his surroundings and using one opponent against another and so forth. And it was really a lot of fun to watch uh, the KC guys, you know, improvise things with Christian, with, with Paul and, and everybody and put together uh, some very interesting moves and, and combinations of moves so that you see him use one thing against another thing against another thing with this very unique fighting style.